Hello everyone, my name is Carla R. Cannon, also known as the Trailblazer. I am here to teach you how to transition from employee to CEO. I am the founder and CEO of Carla R. Cannon Enterprises, where I teach others how to write, publish, and market their book. My movement, Women of Standard, is all about building, equipping, and strengthening global women from the pulpit to the marketplace, teaching them how to operate authentically in their divine calling and in a spirit of excellence. Today, I am very, very passionate about this topic. I'm very excited to be sharing with you because I personally was able to leave my job. I was able to transition from employee to CEO. I went from dreading my job, from hating to go in, having headaches. Y'all know how it is. You go on your job, you dread going, but you are so excited to leave. And that's how I was. I was very unhappy working in my cubicle, pushing, you know, punching the clock, working a nine to five, feeling under, feeling unappreciated, right? Like trying to juggle my family, not having enough time with my daughter and looked at as a number. Not looked at as a person, but looked at as a number. We just need you to, you know, do this data entry. We need you to input these. You know what I'm saying? So y'all know how it is on your job. You may not feel appreciated, but I'm here to let you know that while you're on that job, you can develop a plan, you can develop a strategy, and you can transition from employee to CEO. While you're on that job, you can be learning from your boss. That's right. You can learn twofold. You can learn what to do and what not to do when you develop your own company and brand. Let's dive right in. I am going to share with you today five strategies on how you can transition from employee to CEO. Again, I'm excited because I was able to do this, so I'm telling you it works. If you follow this plan, if you follow these strategies, it will work for you. Number one, you must identify your why. I'm going to say it again. You must identify your why. Remember this. Why you do what you do is more important than what you actually do. Come on. What would be your reason? Why do you want to come off of your job? Why do you want to transition from employee to CEO? Is it for financial enhancement and security? Your ability to spend more time with your family? What are your reasons? Number one, you have to establish your why. Let me tell you why. <laughs> establish your why. Let me tell you why, right? You have to uh, establish your why because when it gets tough, it's going to be your why that's going to keep you going. I'm here to encourage you, but I also want to be a realist and let you know that being a full-time entrepreneur is no A lot of hard work. There may be some sleepless nights, and you may have to uh, do some major investments, but it also has a great return because you can be your own boss. You can develop your organization and your business how you want it to. You can structure it in the way that you want it to, and you can build your brand, develop your following, and go out here and leave a mark on the world while leaving a legacy for your family. So I want to encourage you, you have to identify your why for why you do what you do is more important than what you actually do. You have to get to that place that you eat, sleep, dream your vision. Come on. That you are so excited about coming off that job because you say, you know what? There's something greater than this. I have, I have more on the inside of me to give to the world than punching this clock, helping build somebody else's vision. Now, let me tell you this. Working to build someone else's vision, that's great, but you can't stay there. Can I tell you, it's okay because while you're helping build someone else's vision, that's giving you more strength, more, more information that you will need so that when you step up on your own, you will know, you will learn the difference from what to do again and what not to do. Number two, you have to write the vision. Come on, before you step out um, on your own, you must be very clear about what it is that you want to do. You must know two things. You must know who you are and what it is that you want to do. Writing your vision includes knowing your ultimate place of arrival and the ability to paint a clear picture of what you desire out of your life. Come on, that means you must know the type of business you desire to have. Meaning, are you offering a service or product how many how much money do you want to make and in writing the vision it's very important that you organize your thoughts see just like I got this paper here I got my book because I'm an informationalist I teach on a, on various topics so to stay on course I said let me write down my nuggets so that I can make sure I give you 
everything I have on that particular topic. So many may say also they want to be a millionaire. Don't you hear that all the time? We read books on how to get rich quick and you know everybody wants to be a millionaire but at the end of the day there has to be a strategy. You have to have a plan on how you're going to make that money. It's not going to fall from the sky. You remember um, growing up, your mother would say, boy or girl, money don't grow on trees, right? <laughs> so you have to have a strategy on how you plan to accomplish what it is that you want to accomplish. So number one, you have to identify your why. For why you do what you do is more important than what you actually do. Number two, you got to write the vision. You got to know ultimately where it is that you want to end up. It doesn't matter how you start. Do not despise small beginnings. When I started out with Women of Standard Magazine, it, at first it was a newsletter. Matter of fact, let's go before that. It was just a letter that I was sending. No, no format, no formation or anything. I would just send out a letter to certain people encouraging them, met the right person. They said, hey, why don't you develop this into a newsletter? And we did that for 12 months before establishing the magazine. Can I tell you that in writing your vision, it's going to take consistency. You have to have enough Faith, you must have you must have enough belief in you that although you can't see it, you gotta although you can't see it in the natural, you gotta see it in your mind. You gotta see it being manifested. You gotta see yourself running your own incorporation. You gotta see yourself building your own brand. You gotta see yourself hiring staff. You gotta see yourself firing staff. You gotta see yourself meeting with your team. You gotta see yourself driving the car that you want, living in the house that you want, developing your own hours, buying the clothes that you want. Come on. You got to understand that it is time now to make your vision a reality, but it starts with a decision. Number, and, and, that, and that decision is you have to choose to develop a plan. You have to know why it is that you want. What it, maybe you're just tired of being broke. Come on, money issues, right? Maybe you're tired of having to live paycheck to paycheck because you're busting your butt. But when you get that check at the end of those two weeks, it don't add up. It's okay to say, I want to have some financial release. I want to be able to control the money that I bring in. Can I tell you that the average person will stay on their job, nickel and diamond it, and call it job security. You see my face? They will call it job security. That's not job security. Job security is when you can do what you love and develop a, and, 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 and you can do what you love, right? And charge what you want to charge. And But there has to be strategies on how you can keep that revenue streaming in. But it can happen and it will happen. But you have to understand, you got to write that vision and you got to make it very plain. And in writing the vision, you must incorporate not only what you want to do, but how you plan to get there. Remember this, a goal without a strategic plan of action is simply a wish. I'm going to say it again. A goal without a strategic plan of action is simply a wish. You can dream all day. You know, they're talking about dream big, dream big, think big. I hear you. But if you don't develop a strategic plan on not just what you want, but how you plan on accomplishing it, Right? And how do you do that? Look at the greats. Who do you admire? Whether it's Tony Robbins, Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry, Jack Canfield, whoever. Learn their story. How did they get out of what they were in? What was their dilemma? Because we all have a story. And that's going to, you know, that, that's going to help ignite your passion so that you can break free from being an employee and go come on over here to, the, to being a CEO. Okay? So the next thing, number three. You must do your homework. See, I just mentioned those greats from the Tony Robbins, Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry, you know, and Ka Jack Canfield, John uh, Maxwell, whoever it is that you like, whoever, just fill in the blank with whoever you look up to, whose pictures you used to have on your wall as a child, right? And you got to do your homework and know, okay, how did they do what they do? Because obstacles are going to arise. I'm telling you, if being an entrepreneur was, uh, was easy, everybody would be doing it. If being successful was easy, everybody would be successful. But there's some people that choose to live mediocre lives. And then there's some of us that say no to mediocrity. And, then, and we say, you know what? I'm not an average person. I don't live an average life because God doesn't have an average plan for my life. Come on, it's okay to be confident in your divine calling so that you can identify the vision and you can execute the vision.
Okay, so number three, again, you must do your homework in your field, whatever it is that you want to do, find out who's already doing what it is that you want to do. Now, I understand to them, you may be a competitor, but you don't have to look at them as competitors. There are going to be some people that are doing what it is that you want to do, and you may see them as mentors. You may even try to reach out to them, look up to them, and ask them to mentor you. Now, I'm going to just alert you that some may pull back from you. Some may embrace you. It all depends. But either way, you'll be ready. And if they don't want to coach you and mentor you, buy their books, you know, re um, attend their conferences, purchase their products because success always leaves clues. Before I left my job, I studied Oprah Winfrey and still do. I, now see, that's one of my favorites. I love her because she's multidimensional. The same way I have Carla R. Cannon, she has Oprah Winfrey, which is a household name. So you just have to study whoever it is that you look up to and learn from them, okay? And I understand that there's going to be some people who may view you as a competitor, but that doesn't mean that you have to view them that way. And also, don't get discouraged. You know, even with being an author and a speaker, I forgot to tell you that, I'm a national best-selling author and a speaker and a conference host and blah, 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 so many other things, right? But I don't allow the market that's currently saturated with speakers and authors to discourage me. I actually use it as fuel to say, you know what? Yes, there may be a lot of authors. Yes, there may be a lot of speakers, but there's only one Carla Cannon right? You got to say that about you. There's only one me. And you got to understand the uniqueness that you bring to your brand, the uniqueness that you bring to your business is what's going to separate you in a crowded market. That's what's going to cause people to uh, that look over some other people to say, hey, I want you. And you say, well, I just launched my business. How is all these great things happening already? Because when you position yourself, see, Brendan Burchard, he talks a lot about proper positioning. It's not enough to have a good idea. I I know we say the million dollar idea I get that but if you don't have a strategic plan with proper positioning and a will a determined mind to execute the vision then it's not gonna happen so but I'm here as a realist but also as an informationalist and your personal coach to let you know that it can and will happen for you if you will first identify your why number two if you will write your vision Number three, if you will do your homework, don't allow the people that's in that market to intimidate you. Why would you be intimidated when there's nobody like you? Whatever you're good at, that's what you capitalize on. Whatever is your strong suit, you don't pay attention to the weaknesses. You hire people. You hire people to do what it is that you're not so good at. Okay, every successful person um, that I know that I've read their books, they always talk about I build my team. Uh, I build a team of people that are a lot smarter than me. So you may be good at one thing, which is what launched the business. But you have, let's say you're not a money person, but you have you hire somebody that's good with numbers. Right. Your financial advisor or your accountant or whoever you let them handle what you're not so good at. So can I tell you, there are no limits. It is possible to transition from employee to CEO, but you have to realize that you have what it takes. And some of you, I'm going to say this, you don't need to read another book. You don't need to get on another conference call. You don't need to attend another conference. You need to just activate the vision. You need to execute the plan. You done, you done wrote the vision a thousand times in all these journals. Come on, I've done it. And I was so afraid to leave my job. I wrote down the plan. And you're going to learn in a minute about this plan I'm talking about. I wrote the plan and I was still afraid to leave my job. When I finally decided to leave a year later, I realized I was doubling my income from what my job was paying me in two weeks. I was doubling in one week. Come on. Can I tell you that fear will cripple you and procrastination will rob you. So you got to move now. It's the fierce urgency of now. You got to understand that life is about choices. You can choose to be average at the bottom where it's crowded. Or you can choose, choose to rise above average and live, you know, an exceptional life, the life of your dreams, and develop a legacy that you leave behind for your children and your children's children. And you can drive what you want to drive. You can live in what you want to live in. I know we're not caught up on material things, but, you know, it, when you put on that Chanel lipstick, ladies, or you put on those red bottoms, you do feel a little better about yourselves. Or, brothers, when you wear your Armani suits or you pull up 
in your Porsche, you do feel a little more confident, especially when you worked your butt off for it. So success is not going to be easy, but I'm here to let you know that you have the power, you have the ability to create the life you want, and you can transition from employee to CEO. Nobody has to tell you to punch a clock. Nobody has to tell you when to come in, when you can leave. Your child is sick and, oh, you come in, you're going to you don't come in, you're going to get rolled up. I've heard all of that foolishness. I didn't go one year to my aunt's funeral because I had just started a job and they told me that if I didn't go, that that would be a write-up. And so I didn't go. One of the, the, the worst decisions I feel I ever made in my life. But then I was depending upon the money. So I had my aunt's funeral. I never was able to attend. And then I had my job. I should have took the right up. <laughs> but when, you have, when you're your own boss and things happen, you can go out and make it happen for you. You don't have to answer to anybody, okay? So let me recap one more time. In transitioning from being an employee to CEO, number one, you have to identify your why. I can't stress how much that's important, how important that is because your why, why you do what you do is more important than what you actually do. Number two, you got to write the vision. You got to know where you are and where you desire to be and you have to tell yourself and believe that you have what it takes to get there. You have what it takes. Look around you. These books that you're reading that your bookshelf is full of are, is evidence of people that are living their dreams. Come on. You know, Les Brown says there's greatness within you. So if he tells us it's greatness within us, remember but he was identified as the dumb twin. He was the one that they said really wasn't going to amount to anything. What's your story? What have pe what labels have people put on you that has followed you into your adulthood where you second guess everything that you do? Well, do I have what it takes? Can I really make a lot of money? Can I come out of debt? Yes, you can. Absolutely. But it starts with believing it, writing the plan and executing it. Number three, you must do your homework. You got to know who's out there. Who's the big leagues in the market? Who's running the market? How much are they getting paid? And you got to build your way. I tell people, serve your way to the top. You know, whatever it is that you need, you serve others that need what it is that you need. And I promise you, um, the act of kindness that you serve, that you um, render, will be given back to you. It's called karma. You know, what, you know, give and it shall be given back unto you. You do it unto others, do unto others as you would like them to do unto you. It's simple principles that can work if we work them, okay? It's not enough to just read them, but you also have to execute them. And another thing... Um, remember when I just said something about, I was talking about your story. Who said you couldn't make it? Who said you wouldn't amount to anything? Who, who was it that caused you to second guess yourself? I am an advocate of encouraging people to share their stories. It is your story that's going to separate you in a crowded market. Come on, there's people that love Tony Robbins simply because of the story that he has. There's people that love Oprah because they can relate to her story. There's people that love Tyler Perry because they can relate to the story. And Dave Ramsey, the reason why he can share all this financial advice because people, they can relate to the story. So you have to position yourself to stand out uniquely in your business. You know, I don't care if it's from the, you know, um, there's a lady named Sandy. She dyes her hair pink, writes for Forbes magazine. We all love Sandy. We love her sayings. But Sandy just has a lot of uniqueness about her. Number one, she got pink hair and don't care. So you have to be uniquely you. That's a part of properly positioning. There's enough duplicates. Don't feel like you got to compete with nobody. The only person you compete with every day of your life is you. That's right. Look in the mirror. The person that you need to beat today is the person that you were yesterday. Come on. The person that you need to beat today, that you're fighting against today, is the one you were yesterday. You want to become better every day. You don't have time to worry about what other people are doing because you're too busy building your brand, building your business so that you can stop being an employee and be a boss, so that you can be a CEO of your own incorporation where you call the shots and you can build your business the way that you see fit so that you can live the life of your dreams. This is not something you just read in a magazine. This is not something that you just read in a book. This is not something that you see on Facebook. Can I tell you, don't get caught up in all of that. Get caught up on what it is that you want in, in, out of life and how you plan on getting there. Spend more time reading, studying, you know, mapping out your plan. And, and social media, you're going to have to carve, you know, just put it on your schedule. If you somebody that likes to network or you like to surf the net, then hey, put that on your schedule. But the majority of your time needs to be building your business. And in building your business, you have to build you. 
That's another thing that's very important. You have to build you. Okay? So if number four, you gotta develop a a, a financial plan um, what, of what it will take to run and manage your company. I'm gonna say it again. Number four, you gotta develop a financial plan of what it will take to run and manage your company. What does this financial plan consist of? 